there is an economic view of privacy when economists look at privacy they don't care much as Posner in 1975 said privacy is not important so long as there is no economic consequence but privacy does privacy have economic consequence yeah any quick answer yeah yes sir it means uh, if there is any data leakage or any person charts yeah. personal information of a particular organization then it yeah. will impact the entire organization yeah. Absolutely right. So, organizations um, collect and store a lot of personal information. The leakage of that actually incurs liability. Therefore, there is economic consequence there. Yeah. Identity theft uh, is uh, may have economic consequence. So, there is economic consequence of um, privacy and we have one session dedicated to this, the economics of privacy in as we go. So, you have pointers already. Then there is uh, post after economic view, there is a feminist view. I am actually referring to uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and their uh, discussion on privacy to give you an overview. So, feminists would see this um, private space uh, not very positively. Um, their argument is that defining say family as a very private space where nobody else can enter, no mediator can enter or nobody can listen or, or overhear etc. actually is in the favor of man but not women because in many communities women are very vulnerable and uh, there is a lot of women abuse and if there is no um, guardian there is no guardian sort of a third person it can lead to uh, violence and abuse of women and therefore strict private boundary for uh, privacy is not in favor of uh, females that is one argument okay um, now let us actually move slowly from privacy the concept of privacy to information privacy which is our focus area so, Alan Westin is uh, often known as the father of privacy, father of information privacy. Till that time, he consistently studied the topic of privacy and wrote several books and published several papers on privacy. So, Alan Westin is a name you cannot miss if you study privacy. So, his definition of privacy is the claim of individuals, groups or institutions to determine for themselves when, how and to what extent information about them is communicated to others. So, in other words, this is the definition of information privacy and information privacy is an individual's control over one's information. Okay. I will decide what I disclose, I should have that right or I should have that autonomy. So, Privacy, uh, information privacy as uh, control over one's information is a, uh, is a fundamental definition of information privacy. Just like in the case of privacy, we saw the definition is the right to be let alone. So, that involves your physical, your body also, you know, your whole. Uh, as a whole, what is privacy? The right to be let alone. But what is information privacy? The ability to decide for yourself what you share or what you do not share. Okay, so, that is the uh, difference between information privacy and privacy. Now, the topic of uh, information privacy became extremely important with the rise of technology. We saw it started with, uh, uh, with photography or cameras and uh, it became very complex when um, organizations including government and other organization, business organizations started collecting and storing and analyzing individuals data in databases okay? and then there was increasing awareness about uh, individuals information or employees information and uh, citizens information to the extent that in the computer era uh, the US government actually instituted a committee US secretary's advisory committee on automated personal data systems in a in 
In 1973, they actually produced a report. But this committee was constituted by the US government because they found time has come to make some sort of guiding principles or law about privacy because data is stored in the databases and there is a concern for privacy. Okay? There is a concern for privacy. And this particular uh, report um, provided five uh, principles known as fair information practice principles. Okay? FIP, FIP it is called FIPP, fair information practice principles. It is uh, known as the most fundamental foundation for information privacy because uh, we will be reviewing various regulations of uh, privacy, security and privacy in different regions of the world, um, Europe, um, India and maybe North America and we will see that FIB actually is sort of um, is sort of a guiding principle for all this regulation. So, what does FIP say? Um, it said there must be no personal data record keeping systems whose very existence is secret. No company including government can collect and keep data about an individual in secret. If any agency collects my data and stores it, I should know. It cannot be secret. Okay? That is principle 1. Principle 2 there must be a way for a person to find out what information about the person is in record and how it is used. I must, if my data is stored, collected and stored, I should have the right to access that information. Um, can you change, make changes in your Aadhaar data? Can you access your Aadhaar data? You can, okay, you can. There, are, there is a procedure for making changes as well okay, and correcting errors, etc. So, um, so, this is principle 2. There must be a way for a person to prevent information about the person that was obtained for one purpose from being used or made available for other purposes without the person's consent. So, if shadi.com collects or you, you provide your information to shadi or a matrimonial site for the purpose of finding a partner or for marriage in our country, then it is a lot of private information that you actually share there. Okay? Now, Shadi has that in your database, in their database. Okay? What do you think? Do they share that data with uh, other agencies? Okay, you should read their, uh, you should read their privacy policy and decide whether you should go for these sites or not. They have, sometimes these companies have got perpetual rights to transmit your data anywhere. Okay? So, we will uh, go, that is why regulation is becoming stricter and stricter today. Okay? So, if an agency is sharing the data that is collected about you to some, some other agency, it should be with your consent. Okay? That is the third principle. Uh, there must be a way for a person to correct or amend a record of identifiable information about the person. If I want to correct some things, there is an error, I should be able to do this. Okay? Uh, Nandin Nilkani, when he developed uh, the Aadhaar idea, so he several times have listened to him saying that we collect only most basic data that is required, nothing more. Okay? So, the, the basic principle is collect only that data which you need, nothing beyond. Okay? So, uh, and it has a purpose okay? and the data should be used only for that purpose. If you collect anything extra, the purpose should be clear. Just for the sake of it, you cannot collect data and store. It should be purpose driven. Fifth principle, any organization creating, maintaining, using or disseminating records of identifiable personal data must assure the reliability of the data for their intended use and must take precautions to prevent misuse of the data. So, now here the onus or the responsibility of securing private data is on the data collector. A agency which collects data should be able to secure the data or data breach is a is, is a breach of law, okay? is a breach of the privacy principle. So, it is a company's responsibility to invest in security by uh, 
by going by this FIPS principle, which became regulation in many countries already. So, these are the basic underlying principles of information privacy, okay, which first got outlined in the fair information practice principles. And in the domain of information privacy, you would often come across these three entities, a reference to these three entities. This is very much there in GDPR when you actually have an overview of GDPR in Europe, data subject, data controller, data processor. Okay, there are three entities. Data subject is a person or an individual whose data is collected. Okay, that is the data subject. Data controller uh, is the agency which collects data okay, and also takes decisions about the data. The data controller can process the data that is collected, can store the data, can also share that data with another entity which is a data processor okay. or the data processes, processor and the data controller can be one entity also. Okay. So, if say ICICI bank has your uh, banking data and it shares the data with an analytics company, okay, uh, fractal analytics. Okay. So, the data is passing hands okay, from controller to processor. So, it becomes a third entity which has access to the private data of the data subject. Okay. So, uh, we need to visualize these three entities across which private data actually gets transmitted, stored and processed. Okay. Uh, we have personal data protection act which of course got dropped in uh, recently and it is government is reworking this uh, act, but in the original document they had similar concepts like uh, data subject is called data principle, data controller is called data fiduciary and uh, data processor is called data processor. Fiduciary is someone whom you entrust your data with. Yeah, so uh, before I hand over uh, the session for uh, the case, there is uh, in research in 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 research literature there is a concept called concern for information privacy. Okay. So privacy can be a talk. You know, you can keep talking about my right, your right, um, regulation, this and that. But in research particularly um, in um, consumer research and also in uh, economic analysis of privacy, you need to have measurable concepts. Okay? You need be, should be able to measure what is the privacy or what is the concern for privacy. Okay? So, that is where scholars developed a scale or a measure of privacy. And uh, if you look at closely these measures, which can be measured using a scale, okay, a Likert scale or whatever. So, they, they look at four dimensions. You can see there are four dimensions to information privacy. One is concern on collection, second is concern on unauthorized access, third is concern on errors and fourth is concern on secondary use. And these are quite intuitive. When you talk about your privacy, actually what are the concerns? What is, you know, where, where all you have concern? One is about collection, okay. Um, why are they collecting? What is the purpose, etc. You know, something that is related to the collection of collection itself, okay. Second is unauthorized access. Having collected would someone else who is accessing my data, my health data, my, you know, my family data and so on. So, that is unauthorized access as a concern. Errors. Uh, you know, uh, I was in gate examination in the, the previous week and one student uh, was not able to log in for giving the, taking the gate exam. And we found that the reason is the, the password is linked to the date of birth and the student has entered a wrong date of birth in the gate database. So, the gate created a database based on the wrong uh, date of birth, which we could see what is the date of birth in the system. But the student is trying with the actual date of birth. Then, of, of course, we checked it with the you know ID card and all. So it was only an error. Okay, but in this case, we allowed the student to write the exam because it's an error. Okay, but the student's concern now is I need to correct that error. Okay, so concern to correct uh, errors okay? uh, pertaining to private data. 
and secondary use will the entity pass my data to somebody else okay and then what happens okay this is an important concern in the information privacy space so keep those four dimensions uh, which can be measured using scales but that is what you mean when you talk about information privacy or concern for information privacy collection unauthorized access errors and secondary use okay this is to give some Sort of, sort of historic milestones about evolution of information privacy from the 60s to 2005 and beyond. So, I, as I said, Alan Weston did not live in the social media era, but you know, the privacy concerns are growing and growing, where you can see countries are um, regulating the flow of information. And uh, Supreme Court had to intervene in our country and say, privacy is a fundamental right okay so you see the discussion on privacy is um, it has become a public uh, debate and uh, the primary reason for this to happen in our times is th there is there is the, there is we call it information error right we live in the information error the biggest change that has happened in the last few decades in the human evolution is the information revolution okay? and that is a very positive effect you know the digital technologies has made life much convenient much easier and we flow today but the dark side of that is that information about you is flowing okay so and that is a huge concern uh, misuse of information information is um, you know plenty and is available and can be stored efficiently, uh, can be transmitted efficiently, but that also has a dark side. Why should organizations worry? You look at the several cases of data breach and the liabilities that have uh, happened in the recent past. Tomorrow, in the next class, we have a dis discussion of a data breach of 2017, right? And uh, that is not very far in history. So, you see that this is a major concern for organizations and therefore information privacy should um, should really be taken seriously by organizations or the leadership of organizations and you see that change happening in addition to a ciso post you now have you now have a information there, there is an office of a, a special office for information privacy okay you will see those uh, changes when we discuss certain specific cases why should individuals worry organizations should worry because they have liability individuals should worry because it's my private data i can be harmed okay and i can be embarrassed mm -hmm. embarrassment is a pain right it's actually a pain uh, and therefore, that can harm you, okay? that can harm your career, okay? that can harm your personal life, your family life, you know, your existence. So, this affects individuals. So, when I joined research PhD program, this, uh, this is one book I read uh, and there was not much focus on privacy those days, but I enjoyed reading Database Nations, uh, Simpson Garfinkel's Database Nation, where um, in the United States, the individuals information was available to um, credit bureaus credit bureaus collect and uh, process and give information about individuals their spending habits their preferences etc to merchants or online merchants or um, you know so this is something profiling of individuals is something that uh, is happening but at the same time uh, well, this is positive for merchants, but this can harm individuals. So, uh, Simpson highlighted several cases where individuals' privacy was affected, but when it when they went to court, the decision was in favor of the uh, business, not in favor of the individuals. Okay, why so? Okay, so that's something that we should inquire. You know, of course, there is something called um, privacy terms and conditions. Uh, of privacy which we all generally agree okay and once you agree there is no legal remedy you agreed right so beware of matrimonial sites 
Okay, so let us discuss a very interesting case today. So, before that, yeah, so I belong to this generation. Okay, so the best thing is that um, we shared a lot, but nobody knows. But if you guys put it, everybody knows, right? There is a record about what you do in the digital space. And uh, many of those social media organizations, of course, now regulation is changing, do not actually delete your information, they retire you, but they do not delete. Okay? Uh, but we do not have to worry. All right. Okay. So, um, so we have the case on, uh, we googled you, right? So, which pertains to the case of privacy, which includes an organization and individuals. So, let us try understand with this, with this case, the, the issue of privacy in more detail. Mm -hmm.